All right, what up, what up, what up? What's good? Hope you are all right, doing fine, feeling good, staying healthy, staying strong, you know. Um, anyways, we, uh, today we're going to talk about G-Funk, and I think it's a nice uh, way, you know, sliding out of, uh, you know, hit the three-wheel motion out of uh, gangster rap and, you know, cruise on into uh, the G-Funk era. There's a lot of, you know, overlap. Um, between the, some of the artists that we talked about in gangsta rap, obviously Dr. Dre um, and, and, and Ice Cube as, as well. Um, so today, yeah, we're going to talk about the genre of G-Funk music. We're going to talk a lot about um, My Mellow My Man and one of the greatest collectives of musicians ever, uh, Parliament Funkadelic. So we'll talk a little bit about their relationship uh, to G-Funk music and how, you know, um, the G-Funk movement uh, artists, you know, really copied and sampled from um, P-Funk in, in various different types of ways, you know, not just musically, but culturally, um, and, and, you know, uh, created this whole kind of similar type of vibe, um, you know, but just very different, you know, a modern vibe, you know, for 20 years after, you know, the, the heyday or 15 years after the heyday of P-Funk and uh, Parliament Funkadelic. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna be on the 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 gangster funk era, the G funk era, early '90s, um, and we'll even get into a little little bit of Kendrick. So so G funk, gangster funk. Um, what are the aesthetics of this music? So you know this music really had its heyday. Um, you know in the early early mid '90s. I mean this this type of music still comes out. People make stuff, but like the the, the foundation of the genre or subgenre, however you want to sort of reference it, uh, um, you know, really had its era in the mid '90s. That was kind of like the heyday. And the important thing to kind of understand, and and this will really make a lot of sense as we flow into uh, some of the next units uh, where we talk about you know New York's response to G Funk, um, is that you know G Funk took over. Um, and I'm not talking like, you know, we've talked about before how, you know, California, <clears throat> you know, the West Coast was, you know, behind, so to speak, on the hip hop trends that, you know, came from New York City. And obviously people from New York have a, a big chip on their shoulder because that's where hip hop, you know, started. You know, they pioneered it, you know, there um, and and were like the leaders in, in, the, in the music and the movement and the culture and the industry in so many ways. And then in the late 80s, you know, specifically with NWA, the West Coast caught up um, and then moved ahead in the early 90s, specifically with two records, uh, Dr. Dre's The Chronic and Snoop Dogg, uh, Doggy Style. Um, it went from it being like West Coast music to it being rap music, meaning like people on the East Coast, in New York, whatever, they were copping, you know, G-Funk type records, specifically those two records, which were, they were like major, you know. Um, but what are the aesthetics of G-Funk, you know? So let's just say this, you know, um, uh, lyrics are not a priority. Now, this is super important because as we look, we look at authenticity and the response to G-Funk in like authenticity rap, of the early 90s in New York City, you know, New York boom bap stuff, you know, lyrics are a priority there, right? But with G-Funk, like, you don't have to be that lyrical. I mean, you look at Dr. Dre's The Chronic, um, you know, again, an album he didn't, he didn't write the lyrics on, um, but like, if you listen to that stuff, it's very simple. You know, the, the, um, the raps are simple, the flow is simple, you know, um, the wordplay is relatively simple, but it doesn't matter, you know. It's all about the beat, and you got to fit in the in the pocket of the beat. You got to ride with the beat in so many ways with G Funk, and and it's the overall sound of the beat and the voice. And the voice as another instrument, you know what I'm saying? In the in the layer of the beat is kind of what G Funk's about, right? You have like <clears throat> more lyrical stuff where like the lyrics are supposed to stand out against the beat, you know, uh, with G-Funk type vibes, it's like you're part of the beat, you know, and that's kind of like actually um, 
for as lyrical as Kendrick is, um, I hear his voice as another instrument, specifically on the Pimp a Butterfly, um, where he kind of fits within the, you know, the harmony and timbre and all that of, of the sound of that record. He, he kind of is another instrument. Um, but yeah, for G-Funk, you know, you didn't have to have the dopest rhymes and it, did, it didn't matter because it, it was really bringing it back to party music. And, and if you really want to think about it, it's like Southern California, barbecue, park, backyard, backyard barbecue raps, you know, um, like all about the, the party, like feel good. Yo, it's L.A., it's sunny out, it's, ni- it's nice out, you know, we cruise in our cars, you know, we have barbecues. You know, in the backyard, we chill out with the friends and the, the homies and the family, you know. Um, but, like, that's kind of, like, the vibe of the whole music is, like, a Cali house party vibe in the early 90s. If you don't know what that was like, uh, maybe some of y'all can ask, ask your parents a little bit about, about, about that vibe. But, um, you know, a lot of the lyrical content's also about love of the area, uh, pride in where you're from and love from being from like love, love, love of Los Angeles, um, that you love that that the city, you know, um, that you love the vibes there. You love the culture there, you know, the people, all that. And then, of course, you know, um, some of the lyrical themes of, of gangster rap, particularly, um, you know, uh, materialism, uh, some uh, stuff, violence. Um, and, uh, you know, um, misogyny, you know, stuff like that, um, you know, those still ring true, um, in the genre, but they're, again, not as, you know, not as <clears throat> foregrounded as, as in, in gangster rap and G-Funk, you know, and gangster funk, it kind of fits in the vibe. Um, gangster funk, G-Funk has to sound good. Um, high fidelity is not a, it's not a concern. You know, uh, I mean, excuse me, high fidelity is a major concern. In other, uh, if you look at some other records from the time, let's say um, Wu-Tang, Enter the 36 Chamber, right? Like another record rate from that, that era, 93, 94, <clears throat> um, you know, the time of, of Dr. Dre's The Chronic, you know, that, that album is horrible sounding. Like like fidelity-wise, it's, it's bad, you know? Um, it was like, you know... Raekwon and Ghostface and Meth were rapping in the headphones type bad sounding. Um, but it didn't matter, right? But with G-Funk, like, the shit had to be crisp and it had to be, it had to be clean. And it had to sound great. Not just good, it had to sound great. And uh, as we'll talk about, you know, Dre, um, he had a very particular process for how he made beats because it gave him full control over every bit of the sound. It allowed him to manipulate the bass in a very different way than just filtering it, all right? It allow, allowed him to, you know, the way he did things is he had a band replay a lot of G, uh, a lot of P-Funk, Parliament Funkadelic, and funky, um, funky tracks, and he sampled that, not from the record, because it allowed him to have control. I'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, and the main reason why I had to sound good too is like, yo, the car, cal- car culture of, of, of Los Angeles. If you, if you listen to, uh, excuse me, if you read um, Justin Williams' article, you know, you'll, you'll know like this shit had to sound good in the, in the car because of, cause like everybody in LA where you spend most of your fucking time in a fucking car, you know, driving to places, you know, and so, um, and then there's the actual like car culture, car modif- modification culture, and um, within this, you know, you had to have a, you had, to, you wanted to put in that tape or that CD and have it bump the fuck out of your system, you know. 